This video demonstrates how to build a rolling monthly strategic budgeting and planning model directly out of a Xero account. It's something we get asked for all the time by our accounting and advisory clients that are building models for SME clients. Um, and it's something that's really easy to do once you've done it once. Now, there are lots of ways you can do this. You could start with a dynamic template and actually import the assumptions from Xero, or you could start with the financial model wizard. So if I click on the financial model wizard icon, this loads up basically the current available libraries we have for you to build a model. Now at the moment there's only one, there's going to be more over time, but the generic financial modeling library contains a whole lot of different charts of accounts um, and a whole lot of different options like with or without GST, different time series, etc. So the easiest way to actually decide which is the best chart of accounts is to actually go to the Madano website and go to the resources. And in the library user guides, you can see under generic financial model, there's a summary of the different charts of accounts. So you can see the charts of accounts really differ by whether or not you've got cost of goods sold for like manufacturing or retail businesses, um, and whether you've got detailed salaries and wages for professional services. Now, the model I'm going to build in this example is just of a hypothetical company called Twisted Cereals, which is effectively a wholesaler. So I'm not going to bother with salaries and wages, but I am going to bother with COGS, and I'm not going to have amortization, so I'm probably just going to go with generic two, and that will suffice. So if I go back to Excel, into the wizard, I'm going to select chart of accounts two. I'm going to include GST so I can model the cash flows properly and the balance sheet properly uh, and integrate it as opposed to just a basic template. And I'm going to click next. The second step of the financial model wizard basically asks you what time series you'd like to start with. Now you're obviously going to roll the model forward over time and you can always add periods. So this is really just equivalent to changing the time series assumptions because uh, the model obviously over time is dynamic. So we are going to start, I've got old data in this demo account that I'm using in zero. So I'm just going to start with 12 months of historical periods and 12 months of forecast for a, a basically a company that finishes with the financial year in December 2015. And we have forecasts for 12 months. Now that's sort of the minimum number of periods. So 24 monthly periods is the minimum number of periods you'd probably do for a, a monthly planning model because you want at least one year of historical data to compare your forecasts against when you do year on year analysis. I'm going to put it in thousands as well. So when I bring the data in from zero, I'm going to actually basically divide it all by a thousand. And I'm going to select zero as the source data. Now note, you can actually do this from any set of financial statements. So if you've got historical financials out of Myob or Hyperion or, or any accounting package at all, you can just do them directly from Excel. The benefit of using QuickBooks or zero is it automatically brings the data in for you um, and maps it in and maps it and at least has a guess at mapping it based on your allocations of your charts of accounts in zero. So I'm going to select zero click next and the system will take you into the zero website ask for you to connect we might ask you for authentication in this case it's just my demo account so i'm just going to log into that and i'm going to get access for 30 minutes and you'll see after it's connected to zero we now have 30 minutes now you need to bear in mind if i go back into excel now you need to bear in mind that the whole point of zero from an Excel modeling perspective is really just entering assumptions. And that's what this tool does. It's basically the import assumptions tool. So I can press OK. And what the system does is it goes and gets the data for each month for the historical income statement and historical balance sheet. Now we don't collect historical cash flow statement data. You can obviously build your model to include that. Um, we imply it. So we sort of derive it. But in, in, in most cases, the historical cash flow statement isn't decent quality enough to import and map reliably. So we just collect the historical income statement and balance sheet. Now, once the historical income statement data has come in, you'll see based on your mapping of your accounts in zero, it will automatically guess them based on the chart of accounts you've selected in, in Madano. So in this case, it's had a pretty good guess at everything. Now, you could change the order of stuff by dragging stuff around. Um, in any case, you'd really just need to focus on reconciling, in this case, net profit. Now, I'm going to put the conversion factor in at 1000 because I don't want to bring in you know, I don't want to bring in dollars when it's it's a reasonably, you know, large, large company in terms of the dollars. So I'm going to divide them all by a thousand. Now, I just need to work down and just look and check that everything has been allocated properly by default. So in this case, it all looks pretty good. The income statement is in pretty good shape. You can see I've got interest expense from different facilities. So and I'm reconciling my target and my actual impact. So I'm going to click next. And the balance sheet, again, is reconciling. It doesn't necessarily mean everything's allocated properly. So I'm just going to look that debtors looks fine. Um, now here I've got accumulated depreciation out of zero and amortization. So I'm actually going to put the accumulated, the contra accounts, for example, for trademarks against trademarks. So, so it's basically going to net these off. So against buildings and machinery and equipment, because I don't want 
in modeling, we don't we, we basically do net asset value modeling. We don't forecast contra accounts like you do with historical reporting. So by putting these into groups like this, you basically are going to bring in the, the net summation of those. And what it's going to do is actually import them using formulas and it's going to bring both those numbers in. And my, my net position of those is going to be my opening balance for my forecast for machinery and equipment. So then I just go down and make sure the other allocations are, are good. Now, in a large model, you see here the commercial paper, which should be part of debt. In a large set of financial statements out of zero, what you often find is people have terrible charts of accounts in zero. So what you often end up doing, half the value add is mapping those accounts. And you really want to map them to the way you want to forecast your data. So for example, on the income statement, you really want to map according to drivers, which means they might have 50 operating expenditure items, but if they really want to look at them in, in, in 10 categories in their financial model, then just map many to one to actually make sure that the model makes sense. Don't build a model based on your accounting package, build your model and then map your accounting package to it. I can't stress highly enough how important that is. Otherwise you'll end up with a model that will be almost unusable just because your historical data is terrible. So after doing this and making sure it reconciles, I'm just going to click create. And what the new financial model wizard is doing here is it's actually inserting each of the modules that are required to create a full integrated 3 model of this company, which we chose chart of accounts to, including GST. So you can see it's putting in the, the financial statements with the historical income statement and balance sheet, and then the forecast income statement balance sheet and cash flow. So we have, they're actually all periods financials. And then it's putting through the revenues and expenses, working capital. It's going to move through onto assets. In this case, we didn't have intangible specifically, so we've just got fixed assets. And then we have other financial statement items, debt, equity, corporate tax. So instead of using a dynamic template, this is building it from scratch, but it's effectively the same as opening a dynamic template and importing the data. We're just accelerating the process because the financial model wizard does it all in, in one dialogue. So you basically get to a very good state very quickly. Okay, so once that's done, we actually have a full integrated financial model with the historical data coming out of zero for the historical income statement and the historical balance sheet for 12 historical periods as we specified. And I can go in and call this model Twisted Zeros. And I'm going to call this Budgeting and Planning Model. And you can obviously put a whole lot of notes in there about what the model is actually going to do. Now you notice when the model's first built, we have an alert in our inventory output. So, and that's purely because if I look at the actual data, we haven't yet put forecasts in. So at the moment, everything's going to zero. So we've got our historical data effectively falling off a cliff. And you can see that with revenues and expenses. So what I'm going to do to get this model up really quickly is I'm actually going to replace, I'm going to replace from web the revenue module and I'm just going to put a year on year growth rates module in. And the benefit of putting a year on year module in, like year on year growth rates, is you can pretty quickly get a model up without actually sitting there worrying about what every single forecast number is, just based on prior year's data. And that's what we often do before we give the model to the client to populate. I'm going to do the same with operating expenditure. And then you really have a conversation with your client about how they would like to forecast each of these items. Because in most cases, you, you actually want to forecast your revenues and expenses using drivers that are specific to this business. So you customize them, which is what the, the customize, module customization training courses we provide are all about. But in this case, I'm just going to put year on your growth rates, and then I'm going to put in some default assumptions. Okay, and after completing the revenue expenses assumptions, I'm going to move on to the working capital, which is my debtors, inventory, creditors, and inventory payables. And again, I'm just going to put some numbers in to give the client a starting point. Then after completing working capital, we're going to go to fixed assets and put some, some starting point numbers in for this. And for capital structure, I'm just going to put some fairly random numbers in to start. I'm just going to assume it all an interest rate of 7.5%. And it's really the reason why you do this is if you give the client a model that's completely empty with zero forecast, they often really don't feel like you've given them a completed model, even though it is, it just requires assumptions. So the actual art of putting some numbers in as a starting point, obviously explaining that they're not final numbers, is often much more effective with clients than giving them an empty model and expecting them to actually do everything from scratch. Now for ordinary equity, I'm just going to leave this. Um, at the moment, we've just got some default assumptions in there. I think we're not paying any dividends at the moment, so I'm just going to leave that. Uh, that's obviously a discussion for the, to have with the client. Uh, I'm going to leave the corporate taxation and the GST as it is as well. It seems pretty straightforward. We've got a, a junior end that's right, 10% uh, 10 GST rate, quarterly 
quarterly baz in this case so i'm just going to leave those and other financial statement items i'm just going to put an all interest rate on cash at bank of say 1.5 percent just so we have some interest on cash coming through now note that the other balance sheet items module within this workbook only really asks for increase and decrease so you can basically leave them flat and if you go to the financial statements you'll see we now have a full set of financials with 12 months of historicals and then 12 months of forecast so just by basically within 15 minutes we have a full model up um, and we can actually start discussing with the client what they'd like to do with some of their items in terms of you know other items and their drivers now what most people fundamentally misunderstand when building a rolling budgeting and planning model is that a rolling budgeting planning model really is just a monthly historical forecast model uh, that rolls over time and the budgeting process is really just laid on top of that so the best and the easiest way to create a budget for a simple model is just to insert a budget into this model and and all the budget will do is collect your forecast for the first 12 months and lock them down and store them as assumptions so let's do that let's go and insert a i'm going to insert a budget module okay so you'll see it will pick up the library i chose which is chart of counts 2 i'm going to go to all genres and i'm going to look for a budget module so here we go so my budget income statement so i'm going to insert the budget module now there is no one way of doing a budget in this case we're just looking at the budget income statement you could obviously budget a balance sheet and cash flow if you wanted to but we're just looking at the budget income statement now the best way of doing a budget really quickly is just to say well in this model the reason why we included 12 months of forecasts is so we actually have 12 months of historical data and then we have 12 months of forecast data so effectively what we've done in this case you would have gone to the client and resolved all your forecasts for the next 12 months but these four these 12 months of forecasts are effectively our budget at this point in time and that's why when you prior to a financial year you should have these numbers finalized in this case by december 2015 the client would have sat down and finalized these forecasts and really gone through in detail their assumptions now in order to create the budget all we do is we go to the budget income statement module we use the import assumptions tool and this time we import from excel we import the actual income statement itself for all periods um, and we don't need a mapping file because it's, it's all automatically mapped one for one and we can just bring that straight through so you'll see it's automatically mapped because the budget income statement has automatically picked up the precedence out the categories out of the income statement module itself so i can import this and now i've got a budget and now if i actually click on my hyperlink just to have a look at the budget versus actual i can see that at the moment my budget variance analysis is zero because my income statement and my budget are exactly the same now another way of seeing that is to insert a budget variance analysis dashboard which we've called budget dashboard and I can insert that and a budget income statement dashboard does the same thing it shows the, the projected income statement the budget income statement and the variance now a month later the client comes to you and says okay January 16 we now have actual numbers reconciled in zero and this is how you roll your budget model so you go to your time series assumptions and you say okay my last actual period is now January because I have January data available this is going to add an historical period to the model so all this does and this is what we call the sliding doors because it adds an extra column to the historical income statement and balance sheet and then it hides on the forecast revenues and expenses it hides january because in the all periods outputs now january is now an historical number so you can see here we have january there's no data in there so january is now part of the historical data so we can now go in and go to the historical income statements and i'm going to import assumptions from zero i'm going to select zero again and i'm actually going to import using the using the mapping file we used when we actually created the system i'm going to import the historical data for january so now we've got january 16 data and you can see it's not quite right and we can look down and we can say what's changed you can see social media strategy doesn't appear to be in there so it looks like a new category of expenses that's been added to zero so i'm going to bring social media strategy in and when I bring that in, you can see it'll come into the actual model in the background. And then I can import this data and it populates the January 16. And then I can do the same for the balance sheet. And in this case, the balance sheet has reconciled perfectly. Now, you'll obviously have to spend more time in a more realistic example than this, but it's the same concepts for a complex model as it is for a simple example like this. So I can import. And now I've got my updated forecasts. So now I can go to my budget income statement summary and I can see that we actually achieved for January. So I've got the income statement here, the actual historical income statement was 72. 
So we've come in 22 above budget or net profit after tax level, which over the period of the year has created $20,000 of extra net profit after tax. Now what we'd normally do is go in and we would do a reforecast. So for example, I would come to my revenue and let's assume I decide that revenue now really should be something close to say 8% and maybe my profit margins are a bit higher, so 26.5%. So obviously this is the reforecasting process will be a complex one done with the client. But after doing this, you can then go and you have your all periods. The all periods financial statements now include January's historical number and you can now go into your budget income statement summary and you can see that we're actually forecasting now um, the income statement budget variance analysis is now 145 up for the year. So originally our projected is now 899, our budget was 754, and this is our budget variance analysis and rolling reforecasting. And then you can do all types of custom dashboards to do this, to do to actually look further at what this data is doing. Um, you know, you might also then want to put some additional dashboards in, such as say a financial statement summary. And this is the type of stuff clients absolutely love, which you can create as an A3 dashboard, landscape or portrait. But the overall process is what Madano is fantastic for, is creating a, an, a, an historical and forecast rolling model that rolls each month, easily is integrated to your zero data and enables you to do reforecasting and then have dashboard output. So you can basically use this to run the business strategically, operationally, and, and just on a core financial level uh, with very little work each month. And that's how Madano is used to implement zero rolling budgeting and planning.